So this is the channel. I've already went through it. Make sure there's no stone or debris. This is the amount of chana I will be using. I'm going to wash it and I'm going to soak it with hot water. It's already washed, so I'm adding one teaspoon of baking powder to this. And in goes my hot water. So this has to soak overnight just for it to swell. Okay, you guys. So the chana has been soaked overnight. I it's just for like a couple hours. You can soak it for like two to three hours. Once it swells, some people say grows, you're going to wash it out from this water and put it up to boil. I'll show you that step. So it's washed out. This is what your chana grains or chippy would look like when it's swollen or grows or expands as I said it doubles in size I'm going to empty it into my pot that I'm going to be boiling it with and let's move on to the stove for part one for the doubles In my pot with the chickpea or chana, I'm adding hot water to it. This you have to let it boil until it's soft. Not on the hard side, it has to be on the soft side, but the grains have to remain whole. And I will add salt. And this is just the start up of it. So when it's almost finished, I'm going to be adding the rest of ingredients. I will show you what it is. So your chana has started to bubble a little bit. And you see all that debris that it let out, that froth, the impurities from the chana is letting out. You're going to scoop it out. Those are the gases from the chana or chickpea grains. That's why I wanted to take out this before adding in any extra ingredients. There we go. So now I will show you what I will add. So I have here my saffron or turmeric, my um, anchor masala and curry powder. But all the ingredients has to add in steps. It has to add in steps, different stages of the chana for that doubles. And I have added my curry powder. Now, some people make it alone with the curry. I like to add my saffron and turmeric as well too. Give that a mix, let it continue cooking. I will have to add more water, of course, as I go along. So I have my water heating in the kettle there, so I will add a little bit just to top it up and I'll show you as I go along what's the other ingredients. See the first set of water has dried out and the chana is still feeling hard. So this is where the second set of water will go in. We'll give this a mix and let it continue to boil. As you can see, the grains for the chana or the chickpea is still on the hard side. When I press it, it's still hard, so it has to go for a bit. So you see the chana, the liquid has been evaporated out again and the grains are looking like if it's cracked. So this is where we're going to start to add in our different layers of ingredients. So I have here that same bandanya or shadow benny that we did in the food processor. I have 
garlic. We're going to give this a turn. This is where we're going to start to season up our channel here now. And pimento peppers that I grinded. Remember, we don't want to make our channel on the spicy side because we have all that sauces to go with it especially that roasted pepper plus the red pepper sauce and ancho masala the ancho masala gives it that nice scent And lastly, we will add one teaspoon of baking powder. That gives the chana or the chickpea a nice consistency. It helps break down the chickpea or the chana to get that sauce or that gravy. So now we will add water. We will add water because this is going to make our sauce for that nice consistency for that doubles, that doubles chana or bara chana. And you can make it how thin or how thick you like it. I'll be going in with all of my pimento pepper. It's just two. It's for flavor, it's not for spiciness or heat. And we're going to let that come to a boil again. Our chana or chickpea is finished. This is what it would look like. In the meantime, these are my ingredients for my chutneys. I have my peppers here for my roasted red peppers and for my pepper sauce. I have my bandania or shadow benny which I will chop up and put in the food processor to do fine. This garlic has been done already in the food processor. It did very fine. I have some whole garlic to do some mango chutney together with some bandana in the blender with pepper. So let's get putting the chutneys together in the meantime. So the bandana or shadow benny has been grinded already. I have here my grind garlic. And I have peppers so let's move on to the stove to make our chutneys I have here my tambran which has been soaking in hot water and I just lit the stove so the soaking part is just for the tambran to separate to get soft and separate out so now I will add salt I will add my green seasoning garlic bandania and that pepper also, I have here anchar masala goes in and also brown sugar will go in. Now this is a sweet sauce so feel free to add how much sugar you like but I'll show you that consistency when it's almost finished and as you can see all those little itsy bits of pieces of that bandania and that garlic I will go in with my rest of sugar that was about a cup of sugar and when it starts to boil and that sauce starts to change and get that to that consistency that I like 
I will taste it and adjust the suit. I will leave the ingredients in the description box how to make this chutney. I have this chutney on a video already anyways in one of those. I will see if I get the link and put it up. So the pepper, I left it whole for you guys to see it. You can also do it in the food processor with your garlic and your bandania to get that itsy bitsy pieces. But it's going to mash, um, mash up in here, melt out in here anyways. So that's one chutney started. And the ancho masala, you can add how much you like to whatever color you prefer. So on to the next one. And the tamarind chutney or sweet sauce or tamarind sauce is almost finished. The consistency has to get to a nice sticky consistency. It's still liquidy. And all your tamarinds has to be separated nicely. I did went ahead and add in one yellow pimento pepper for that extra flavor together with my hot scotch bonnet pepper so this has to continue to cook a little bit and this is the tamarind the sweet tamarind sauce it's finished this is what you would look it would look like the consistency now you can break down your tamarind pieces into separate pieces if you want take a potato masher and just or a spoon and just let it separate or you can leave it as that because it's mostly the sauce you want and just a few pieces of tamarind to use so this is what your tamarind sauce your finished tamarind sauce would look like this one's going to be mango boiled mango chutney added hot water I will add my salt my green seasoning is one tablespoon of everything. We're going to give this a mix. Now this one you can add ancho masala, you can add curry, whatever flavor you prefer. You can even leave it um, just like that on the white side without adding in anything. But I like to add that little bit of ancho masala. And I will add my sugar goes in give this a mix and now we have our tamarind chutney and our mango chutney that's going our chana is still boiling on medium heat and now I will do my pepper for my pepper roasted pepper chutney this is your mango sauce your sweet mango sauce now this one is not as sweet as the tamarind you can adjust to what sweetness you like I left it on the little sour side so it will be a little on the tart side sweet and sour you can make it how you like it so I'm going to turn off my heat and as it tends to cool it will get a little on the thickish side or a nice consistency to you to your likings and that's it for the mango chutney so I have here my peppers for my roasted pepper sauce or roasted pepper. This has to get charred here on the heat. I also have um, a whole head of garlic. So that has to roast up as well too. And then I'll put this in the food processor to process. So this is the roast pepper, so the roasted pepper sauce that has been roasted, the pepper and the garlic. So I just put it in the food processor, pulse it, pulse it, pulse it, let it go, add a little vinegar and make it to the consistency you like. This does not have to be on the thin side, it can be on the thick side because we already have our pepper sauce in the back there. So this is what you want roasted red pepper sauce so here we have all our sauces to go with our bara and chana 
to make it that doubles. I have here mango chutney, roasted red peppers, bandanilla or shadow bunny chutney, sour or sweet mango sauce, red pepper sauce, tambran, sweet tambran sauce, and our kuchala. Kuchala is a must for me in doubles. So all this is our delicious, flavorful sauces. So let's get mixing our barra. So here I have my flour and my salt. I will add the rest of ingredients. I have baking powder. I have brown sugar. I have yeast. And I have turmeric. I'm going in with half of my turmeric. Well, I'll use oil. Give that a mix. Now double sparrow when you're mixing it. I got a little advice on this from Indira. She's known as Dira. Uh, she said you can mix your bar, your flour, your barra mixed here, yeah, and fry same time, or you can mix and leave for like twenty minutes, depending. So I'm going to mix and fry one time. My other doubles video on my YouTube channel is to mix. Let it soak so that yeast will do its magic. I am going to mix and fry, make my barras and fry one time today. recipe that I used in my other video as well but I just wanted to redo this video with a little more extra of the sauces So once everything is mixed properly together, I wanted to make sure everything is incorporated and mixed properly. Now I will add a little extra flour to make that dough. So I just wanted to say thank you Indira for giving me that advice where you can mix your barra dough and fry one time. Here I have oil. The oil will help it to keep soft. When you form that that soft, nice dough. just an extra cup of flour that I have here to help me form back that dough but I wanted to make sure that dough was mixed soft before so everything will get incorporated
see it's forming that dough because we don't want it too soft so dough Everything is pulled together. Now I will add back my oil, some of the oil. The bottom. Scrape off the sides and add your oil on top. In the meantime, you're going to put your oil to hot. Make sure your oil is very, very hot. And you see how nice and soft that dough is. When you're mixing it, you will feel that softness or that fluffiness to it. And that is what we're looking for. Right? We're just gonna put some oil at the bottom of the bowl. Can cover this with a plastic wrap just for like about 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. As I said, you can fry same time, but let's just give it a little chance to set. So I have here my tray that I will oil. When I, when I break off the bar of those. I will place them in here. I have here the barra. See how it's risen a little bit with the east. first actually and break them off so you see how small it is so I'm going to break off the rest and then I'll show you the next step just break them off let me show you. Oil your hands and just break them off. Pinch them off and place them in your tray. Leave a space. So let me continue doing them out and then I'll show you the frying process. So these are the little barados. So let's get frying them to show you how to open out your barado. You're going to oil. You can do this on your countertop. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to do it here. You're going to oil your hands and you're going to open them out. Press them out. Push back, push down to the sides. And that's how you open your bar door. And you're going to pick them up like this and throw them in that hot oil. So let's move across to that stove. Oil is, you see how that oil is smoking? That is what we're looking for. And in goes our double, our barra. You just throw and take out. And that's it. As soon as you put in, put, throw that in the oil, you're going to flip, flip, take out. That's it. I 
as I said, the oil has to be very hot for that crispiness, that crispy texture into that doubles. I'll do one more. Once you throw that barra into that oil, you will hear that screecher noise. And that is what is going to give it that crispiness to the barra. So let me get the rest frying and then I'll show you the assembly. So these are the barras. This is what the barras looks like. So I'm going to assemble them and show you guys. So assembling time. Chana or chickpeas. And now sauce time. So I have here our shadow benny or bandania sauce. I have the roasted pepper sauce. Some of that will go in. The mango chutney will go in. The sweet sauce, tamarind sauce will go on top. I have my hot sauce will go on top and our mango sauce that is a little bit on the sweet and sour side and our kuchula. Now each sauce is optional so this is what how it's going to be usually served. So this is what we usually do. You're gonna and you're gonna wrap it. Pull, twist, wrap, and turn. And that's your doubles. And that's it. That's how our doubles is served. So that's all there is to it time to enjoy I'll show you how we eat it now and when it's open back this is how we usually eat it and take a bite so I'm going to taste it delicious time to eat thank you for watching